Alright everyone, let's talk about the bedrock of any well-rounded retirement portfolio, bonds. Imagine these assets like the flip side of a loan. The issuers, think of governments or corporations, who need a cash boost are the borrowers. And you, the investor, play the part of the lender. That's right, now you get to play the banker to those in need. And just like any loan you had to take out for your home, your car, bonds come with interest payments on top of the principal amount that you get back, giving you a steady stream of cash flow. This makes them an attractive investment, especially for retirees looking to replace their paychecks. Plus, they're typically less volatile than stocks, making them perfect for preserving your capital in retirement. Unfortunately though, in 2022, it was a tough year for both bonds and stocks as the Federal Reserve jacked up interest rates to fight inflation. However, the outlook for 2023 is much brighter, and diversification still holds the crown as investors' best strategy. Kevin O'Leary said that diversification is the only way to handle market risk. And this is especially true for those in retirement, when balancing risk, income, and capital preservation is crucial. Now building a diversified portfolio of individual bonds can be a bit of a brain buster. But don't worry, bond funds have made access to fixed income markets a piece of cake. But remember, not all bond funds are created equal. They might be easy to buy, but they can also be easy to misunderstand. So let's take a quick look at some of the top bond investments out there, including both mutual funds and ETFs to see what they've got to offer. Now, if you're wondering about the key differences between the two, let's break it down in about 30 seconds. With mutual funds, all buying and selling happens once a day at a fixed price. On the other hand, ETFs can be bought and sold throughout the trading day just like stocks. Plus, ETFs often come with lower fees thanks to their record keeping and tax efficiencies, and you can typically buy for as little as 30 bucks. Compared to many mutual funds, which often require a minimal investment, of $3,000. For retirement investors who've already built up a decent nest egg, these differences aren't the be all end all. And what truly matters is choosing a bond fund or ETF that aligns with your personal investment strategy. So remember, it's not about picking sides in the ETF versus mutual fund showdown. It's about choosing the right investment tool for you. Now, let's get into that list. Starting off our list, we have the Vanguard Total Bond Market ETF, ticker symbol BND. This titan of a fund also has a mutual fund twin, the Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund Admiral Shares, or ticker symbol VBTLX. Regardless of the ticker or type, the strategy is consistent. Each fund offers exposure to different investment grade bonds from Uncle Sam and corporate borrowers. Breaking it down, we're looking at about 47% of assets in the government bonds and 20% in bonds from mortgage lenders like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and 25% in high-ranking corporations like Amazon and American Express. It might not be the flashiest strategy, but if you're after a slice of the entire bond market pie, these funds are your go-to. The beauty of this bond fund lies in its broad diversification and focus on credit worthy borrowers. It's basically the Superman of bond funds. And currently it yields about 2.6%, meaning you'll get that percentage of your initial investment paid back over the next year, even if the principal value doesn't budge. To showcase the difference between the bond ETF and mutual funds, let's use our vanguards as examples. The Vanguard Total Bond ETF has an annual expense ratio of 0.03%. And it's currently priced at just under $80. The Admiral Shares Mutual Fund, on the other hand, charges a 0.05% in annual expenses and requires a minimal investment of $3,000. So, if you've got $3,000, both are on the table. And while the ETF fees are a smidge lower, 0.02% point to be exact, 
it only adds up to about a savings of 60 cents per year. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not a huge difference. But if those 60 cents and that 0.02% point makes a difference to you, the ETF is going to be the cheaper version. Now let's shift gears and talk about the Fidelity Flex Conservative Income Bond Fund, ticker symbol FJTDX. You see, when interest rates rise, bond funds often take a hit as investors are lured away by new higher yielding assets, leaving the older bonds in these funds feeling a little bit unloved. Take our last name on the list, VB. TLX, the Vanguard Total Bond Index, for instance, in 2022, it took a nearly 14% tumble. Sure, it did better than the 20% nosedive of the S&P 500, and the yield did offset some of the damage, but it still hurt. In contrast, FJTDX managed to pull off a modest gain in a year that saw most other investments faceplant, all while maintaining an impressive low risk profile. Plus, you get the current payout of about a 3.3% yield. How? Well, the FJTDX is like a sniper, very targeted. It holds a portfolio of less than 240 total bonds. The bonds in the Fidelity Fund, on the other hand, have a much shorter duration compared to its peers. This allows it to snap up shorter term bond investments and can sell them off swiftly before they can decline or before flashier, newer debt issuance can hog the limelight. Oh, and did I mention this bond fund also comes with zero expense ratio? That's right, this is part of the Fidelity family zero expense ratio funds. The world of bond funds and ETFs is vast and varied, but you're not restricted to comprehensive bond funds like Vanguard or the highly selective fund like Fidelity's depending on your individual risk tolerance and investment objectives. There's likely an option that perfectly fits your retirement investment needs. Let's get into a few of those now. Kicking off the ETF lineup, we have the Vanguard Short Term Treasury ETF, ticker symbol VGSH. Now VGSH is a viable option for investors who are looking for a conservative approach to the current interest rate environment. This ETF tracks the performance of the Bloomberg Barclays US 1 to 3 year treasury bond index, which includes US treasury bonds with a remaining maturity of between 1 and 3 years. With its focus on US treasury bonds, this ETF offers a high degree of credit quality since these bonds are backed by the full faith and credit of the US government. This makes it a safe haven in volatile markets, providing a degree of capital preservation. However, the trade off for this safety is a relatively low yield. The relatively short duration of VGSH's holdings also mean it's less sensitive to interest rate changing. This has been an advantage in the rising interest rate environment where bond prices typically fall. A shorter duration mitigates the price drop compared to bonds with longer durations. Currently, VGSH offers a dividend yield of 1.9%. Next on our list, we have the iShares Tips Bond ETF, ticker symbol TIP. Now, TIP is an excellent choice for investors who are concerned about the impact of inflation on their portfolio. This fund seeks to track the investment results of an index composed of inflation-protected US Treasury bonds, which are designed to help protect against inflation. The principal value of TIPS rises with inflation as measured by the Consumer Price Index or the CPI, protecting the investor from inflation risk, making it a good choice for investors seeking to protect their portfolio from inflation. The fund has a relatively low expense ratio for this category. While TIPS protects against inflation, they do not protect against other types of risk such as interest rate risk. When interest rates rise, the price of existing bonds, including TIPS, generally falls. Currently, ticker symbol TIP pays a dividend yield of 5.21%. Now last on our list, we have the PIMCO Senior Loan Active ETF, ticker symbol LONZ. Now this is indeed an interesting option for investors seeking higher yield and willing to accept more risk. This fund primarily invests in senior bank loans, which are floating rate 
instruments. This means their interest rate adjusts with prevailing market rates, providing a degree of protection against rising rates. Senior loans are typically issued by companies with lower credit ratings. These loans are often considered senior because in the event of a company's bankruptcy, senior loan holders are amongst the first to be repaid before other creditors and shareholders. While the higher yields of these loans can be attractive, they come with increased risk. Companies that issue these loans are more likely to default on their debt obligations, especially during economic downturns. Additionally, it's worth noting that LONZ is an actively managed fund, which means that it has a team of investment professionals selecting and managing the loans in this fund, which can potentially add value through professional credit analysis and loan selection, but it also results in a higher expense ratio compared to the passively managed funds on this list. Currently, LONZ pays a dividend yield of 8.29%. Hope you enjoyed this list of bond funds or bond ETFs for retirees. To see our entire playlist of ETFs and stocks for retirees, be sure to check the playlist and I'll see you in the next video.